Uh, well, thank you for coming to our session today. We were a little nervous being at 445 that it would be an empty room, so we're glad that some of you have stuck around for the carnival later tonight. Uh, during our session, we're going to be showing you some practical applications for using the Google Tools um, application in Canvas, right? So a lot of you have probably seen this and had some students talk to you about it. We want to show you a few things that you can do as an instructor and also give you some ideas about how your students can use this to submit assignments and do some of those different things. So when we talk about why using Google Docs, we just want to share a few ideas with you. I think one of the things that's really important sometimes that we forget is sometimes when students submit assignments to us, they don't know how to get them back or they want access to some of those documents later. When they use the Google Docs application to submit their assignments, they still maintain the ownership over it, which I think is a key factor for a lot of the kids, or for our students, excuse me. Um, I say kids because we deal with K through 20, so if I say kids, I apologize, but uh, we, we kind of run the gamut. So One of the big things we're going to talk about in here is easier collaboration for your assignments. Um, being able to put people into groups and then assign them different rights to work on a document or work on an assignment together. One of the big things that you'll see is that collaboration is real time. As we go through and show you a couple of examples today, you'll notice that we can actually see people working on an assignment collectively at the same exact moment. And then this is, I love this one. This one comes from uh, Canvas, Can or Instructure. Instructure released a press release in February where they talked about why they have such great integration with Google Docs. And they, this is a direct quote from them. It solves the real issues of access, versioning, incompatible document formats, viruses, and lifespans. So I wanted to make sure that we included all of that. That's a mouthful. But the truth is, when you use Google Docs, it does have a lot to do with a lot of these different reasons. Uh, you don't have to worry about software updates. It just, because it's in the cloud, it automatically gets updated. Um, you don't have to worry about whether someone's got Word and somebody has uh, something else, right? You can all participate and use these files at the same time. So during our session today, we're going to focus on a couple key things. Number one, we're going to show you how you can use collaborations. It's a tool that's embedded in, uh, it's part of your Canvas tools that you can use to create uh, whole class or group projects. Uh, number two, we want to show you how you can establish student submissions and how they can submit their assignments. So we're going to show you this in two ways. One is in just the regular desktop or laptop version. We also want to show you how to do it on the mobile platform because a lot of your students are doing that now. One of the big advantages with Google Docs and Canvas is that you can do it on an iPad. So we'll show you how to do that. And then last, we want to show you how you can use uh, Google Docs as ways to embed some of your content in your courses. Things that maybe you haven't thought of before, whether it's using the presentations tool or using the documents tool or even the forms tool. We're going to show you how you can do a little of that. So one of the first things I want to share with you as we get into the collaboration aspect of Google, Google Docs, Everyone always talks about how they love Google Docs because it lets a lot of people get into a document at the same time. Some of you maybe haven't ever played with this before, and I wanted to show you a little video clip that illustrates collaborating in Google Docs. I'm going to take you on a journey for just a moment, if you will. Uh, one of the key things in a lot of our lives is getting married. And Google's got a great little video that they share about this process of planning the wedding, right? We know, those of us who have gone down the aisle, that I know I didn't matter as far as the wedding. I just had to show up, right? And my wife, she mattered a little more. But who was really the key figure in this? It was her mother, right? <laughs> so now imagine we're planning our wedding list and we're going to use Google Docs to help us plan. Let's take a look at what that may look like. Is that just mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that just mean? But it's a big deal, right? I mean, we can see one of the key factors here in using Google Docs as part of integrations is the ability to have multiple people part of a document. Sometimes you want to kick some people out, right? So mom got the boot in that one. Well, let's show you the first way that we're going to do this. One of the tools that you have access to in your, in your set of tools is found kind of on the side. It depends on where you organize it, but it's the collaborations tool. And I'm actually in there right now. You can kind of see what I've got. So when I go into the collaborations tool, this allows you to set up collaborations either using Etherpad or using Google Docs. 
Uh, just kind of curious, how many of you have done this before with classes? So about a third of you have done this. For those of you who have never done this, I wanted to show you the process so you can see kind of how it works and give you a couple of ideas about how you might use this. So one of the things here, as I kind of come in, if you've never done this before, the teacher has the ability or the instructor has the ability to set these up, but also important is your students have the ability to set up these kind of collaborations. So if they want to work in a small group project, they can jump in and they can work on this. So what are some of the ways we might use something like this? Well, one of the things that we see is when you have all the students, you can do a whole class activity where you get all the students involved in maybe like a class glossary or a definition of terms. So rather than you just providing all of that information, you can leave it as an open document where you could have a lot of people involved. To get started, look how easy it is. We just click on the big Start a New Collaboration button, and it asks you whether you want to use Etherpad, or if I drop this down, whether I want to use Google Docs. Okay? I select Google Docs. I come down and I name the document. So I'm, I'm just going to buzz through this really quick, so we'll just call this one our test. Now I have all the students in my class, and I can assign them individually, or if I've already established groups in my class, so maybe small group uh, projects that uh, students are working on, I can click on the Groups tab, and you can see that I have my groups already established. Uh, groups is just another area in Canvas that you can set up where you can assign students to individual groups. So very quickly, I can grab a group of students, or again, I can just grab individuals and put them into this collaboration. So once I get all of that done, I just come down and click Start Collaboration. Now, what my students will see is the same process that you're seeing right here. Immediately, uh, Canvas goes out and launches Google Docs. It immediately launches it in a new window. So any of these people that I've added to this, now I'm not going to play with this one per se. I've already got one kind of set up so we can show you a practical example. Here's my class glossary. Okay? And you can see that I've got just some questions that I want my students to either define or share examples to illustrate the concepts. Well, look right here. You'll notice that up at the top of my screen, I actually have two of my students that are already in here, don't I? Uh, if you're new to Google Docs, you may have not seen this before, but you can see a couple of icons, uh, kind of a Lego figure and the letter J. That represents students who are currently in this collaboration. So as they start working, you're going to actually see them contributing to our, our document. Okay? I'm putting them on the spot, so we'll see how it goes. But as you get people involved, yeah, they're working on iPads on the wireless, but you can see this is how we can put the students into a small group collaboration. Very quickly, they can start contributing their content. Okay? The content doesn't uh, disappear. Uh, yeah. Yeti is getting booted. That's the student who's not playing by the rules. So yeah. So this is where you get a little nervous when you post these things on a big screen and have you show, show it. So. We're going to leave that now. Oh. <laughs> okay. But that collaboration lives right here in my Google Drive. The way that my students get notified that I've invited them to be part of a collaboration, it depends on a couple of factors. If they've set up their notifications, they'll get that in their notification stream, won't they? So they can find out about a new collaboration that they've been invited to. Um, if they don't have collaborations set up on um, on their notification stream. Because they're using Google Docs, they'll get an email to their Gmail, right? Because that's tying into their Gmail. They'll get an email notification that says that they've been invited to a collaboration. They click on it, and when they get into their Google Drive, it'll be part of the link that says shared with me. So it's not something that they created necessarily unless they were the one that did create it. It'll be part of the shared with me by someone else. So as they go through, they can very quickly go and participate in this. Now, one little thing that we need to be aware of, if the students want to submit this as an assignment, okay, so it's in the collaborations area right now, there's not really a good way to tie it from going from a collaboration over into the assignments. One thing that I've seen suggested, this was actually suggested by Canvas, let me just show you what it would look like. When students come back into the document, I'm, getting, I'm going on a risk here, right, because I'm going back to the document. If they want to publish this so that they can share it in Canvas in the assignments tool, right, where they can paste or they can type, um, it's very easy to get a URL for this assignment. They just have to come underneath the file. And if they go into share, you'll see that it gives them a link. So that's just a copy and a paste back into the assignments tool in Canvas. And then they've got, they've submitted that, right? So now I have access to it. 
One other little trick that I might show you, because sometimes these collaborations, we're never really sure who typed what. Have you ever seen that where you've got four or five students working in a Google Doc and you're not really sure how each of them contributed to this document? One fun, quick way that you can see this, okay, let me just close that window real fast. Oh, I didn't mean to close it all the way out, but if I come back into it here, there it is. If I come back into it and I want to see who participated, how each of my students in class participated, if I just come underneath the file menu, I can click on see revision history and you notice that it puts up the icons of which student typed what. So if I click at 453, I can see which students were typing what parts. It highlights it in a color. We're not seeing it completely because my screen's a little compacted, but that's how it works. So when students contribute to a Google document, everything that they type gets logged as part of the document. So I can quickly go in and see if I, if I need that for some of my management or some of my assessment. I can find out what contributions each individual student made. So the collaborations tool, it's a great tool, very easy to set up, and it really ties in well. One thing I might no show you just lastly, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mindy for a second. If you want to delete a collaboration in here, uh, when you go over to click the delete option, it gives you the option to delete it from Canvas or also from Google Docs. So you can remove the whole thing, meaning that you've submitted it, it's all done, you don't need to have access to this anymore and you want to delete it both from the Canvas environment and also from the individual student's uh, Google Drive account. So it's just one of those things that you can completely wipe it. Um, yeah, a couple quick questions. Can the students do it? The students, can they go in and do this delete also from Google Docs? They can. They have the same rights that I have. So those are some things that we kind of have to work through, right? But yeah, they can. Don't they get to the if they're signed up to use Google Docs integration, they already have a Gmail account. So that's the students, right? If they're using Google Docs integration, the Google account includes Docs and Gmail and all the other tools, so they will get a notification that way. Yeah? Uh-huh. Same, same tie-in. So even though it's using a different email address, it's not gmail.com, it's your university's email address, it still ties into the same system. Okay, so it works the same way. Okay, let's hold off on questions for just a minute. We have a few minutes at the end of our session where we can answer a few more questions. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mindy for a few minutes now. She's going to go in and share with you how you can use, set up this Google Docs uh, for submissions and also show you how to do that. All right. So um, I think I might answer some of those questions. First of all, how, how do you integrate Google Docs? From the settings, um, you have Oh, I can't. There we go. You have this option to authorize Google Docs, authorize other services. So this is just in your personal settings. Your students will have this option as well. And if they click on Google Docs, it's just going to walk them through that process. They have to sign in using their Gmail or their school um, approved account. And it will ask them, just walk them through authorizing it. It's very easy to do. Um, once that's done, uh, in order to have your students submit via Google Docs, you have to make sure that that's turned on in your assignment. And the way you do that... Switch back to the my, my Google I am. Chrome. Yeah, I'm in Chrome. Okay. Um, when you've created an assignment, and I'm just going to go in here to edit it quick, and has anybody else noticed this, that the smaller the font, the more powerful the tool in... Canvas. Has anybody else noticed that? Okay. So, yeah, usually you see that, you know, advanced options and it's that little teeny tiny blue font. Just if you see that, click it. Like just click on that to see what you can do. Okay. So, you do have to make sure that you allow file uploads. If you allow that, then when the student goes to submit their assignment and they have authorized Google Docs, they'll have that Google Docs tab. And what that looks like for the student, let me just um, grab the student view now so you can see from the student point of view. They will see, oh, they've already submitted it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm clicking too fast. Oh. Let me resubmit this. 
um, they'll have the option to do the file upload, or there should be a Google Docs tab right there. So that's interesting. Oh, it's, well, I should be authorized because I'm in as an, as an instructor. Okay, the test student, that's what it is. The test student has not authorized Google Docs, and I'm in as the test student right now. So they would see a tab right here for Google Docs, and do you have your presentation up? There we go. Click on the P. Oh. I've got right. Okay, so that's the instructor authorizes that. Then the student sees a drop down list of all of their Google Docs, and they just select the one that they want to submit. Um, and then things get really cool in Canvas when you go to the speed grader because um, it just is there. Uh, so the student can, oh my gosh, seriously? <laughs> it's the end of the day, right? Is that why this is happening? When you go into speed grader, um, it's there. Now one of the drawbacks is if they're doing a file upload, like a Word document, you have the Crocodoc editing tools where you can annotate on top of it. Um, and you can, obviously, you, you can see you can't do that in Google Docs. But if the student in the comment section gives you the URL to their Google Doc and shares it with you, then you can do all of your commenting in Google Docs rather than in Canvas. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, and then you can have that running commentary and add all your comments right in Google. Um, so that's something to just keep in mind that as far as how you want to grade, if you want to be able to annotate on top, you're not gonna be able to do it because Crocodoc won't allow that with Google Docs. Um, now the last thing I wanted to show you is how your students can submit their assignment right through the iOS app on their um, iPad because I think we're seeing more and more students doing that. So Jared, do you wanna? I'll run it if you just want to talk. Okay. And don't be impressed, he's really not that organized. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for show. <laughs> okay, so from the Google Doc, from your Google Drive app, you, the student will select the document that they want to submit as an assignment. So they have to have the Google Drive app and they have to have the Canvas app. They have to be logged into both. They select the uh, document that they want and then using the share button up at the top, it gives them the option to open in and they're going to open it in Canvas. This to me is amazing. Has anybody had their students do this? This is so cool. And then it says, okay, your, um, your file's ready to submit. So the student clicks okay. They open the course where they want to submit it and Jared's already done that. There we go, he went back to opens the course. Now here's where things get a little tricky. There's no assignments tab right now. So they have to go to schedule. When they go to schedule, they see a list of their upcoming assignments. They select the assignment that they want to submit the document for, and then select submit, and that's it. They can swipe through if it's a multiple page document, select the one they want, and submit it. And they're done, right from their iPad. Is that cool? <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so to recap, if you want your students to be able to submit assignments with Google Docs, they have to authorize Google Docs from the settings page. You as the instructor have to allow file uploads, and then your students will be able to just submit seamlessly right through Google Docs. In the speed grader, you won't be able to annotate over top of the Google Doc, but if they share the URL with you and if they share the document with you, you can do all of your annotating, your commenting, your correcting in Google Docs. Um, and like Jared said, you could even do this for a group assignment and keep track of who's doing what um, with, the ver with the revision history. Um, and then it's pretty easy for your students to also submit assignments via the iOS app. Um, and hold your questions, because I know we're you know, getting short on time and we'll answer questions at the end because Jared's got one more thing that he wants to show you and then we can answer questions. Right. Okay, so it's back to Jared. Thanks. Will you switch back to the desktop now? Thank you. So a lot of us, when we look at our Canvas courses, we probably use something like this. I've got this course set up where it's the syllabus with the assignments view. And traditionally, a lot of us have just kind of put in some text, right? 
copy and pasted some text in there or done something like this uh, just so that we can have a little bit of information about the course and then we give more information if they want to click through our, our uh, Word doc or whatever it is that we want them to see as the syllabus. Well, a friend of mine in Park City School District right here in this district, he was sharing with me an idea that they use for their, their uh, classes. What they've done is they've gone through and they've created uh, kind of like a presentation in Google Docs. So it's a PowerPoint version of, this, of a syllabus. And they put it in here, and here's why he says he does this. Rather than having to update every course every semester, he can just make the changes in here periodically from time to time when he needs to and take that and update it in the Canvas course rather than having to upload it each semester and then you know, put it into the page where he wants it. He can just do it one time and then he can put that into each Canvas course in just a matter of one, one click. Let's show you how this works. So this is just like you see here, it's kind of a course information document. There's one little trick that you have to do in order to get this into Canvas. You need to be able to get some embed code, right? You need to get the HTML code for this so that you can paste it into the rich text editor. It's very easy to get though. I'll just show you how it works. When you go into a presentation, this is for pretty much any of the file types. Got a doc, Excel spreadsheet, or a presentation. When you go into the file menu, about halfway, you know, two-thirds of the way down, you'll see a publish to the web option. And in here, you have to start the publishing. Okay? It says, are you sure you want to publish this? Yeah, I want to publish this. Look what it gives you once you do the publish. You get your embed code. Okay, so nothing terribly fancy there. I just have to copy it. I don't really have to know all, everything that it means. I just know that it's going to let me put it in my Canvas course. So I copy that code. Gives you a few options here of different settings you can change on there. Now I'll come back to my Canvas course and I'll just get into the edit mode. Now, if I paste that <coughs> into the rich text editor right now, it just pastes the code, right? It doesn't really embed that as part of the document. So the one last thing that you need to see is this button up here that says switch views. Yeah, small font, big, big purpose, right? <laughs> so I click on switch views and then I paste that in. Now, you can customize this if you need to. Let's just show you what I mean when I say that. I'm going to hit update syllabus for just a second. And you'll see sometimes it takes a second for me to update it, but notice it's too big, right? I want it to fill the screen, not go past the screen. So I'll just go back into edit mode. And one little trick that I like here is instead of having it with a width, so the widths are always in pixels. I hope I'm not talking too tech here. But instead of putting in a number of pixels, I just put in a percent. So I just say be 100%. So it's just going to fill the space. Whatever you have, that's what it's going to fill. And now I update my syllabus, and you can see that it refreshes and it makes it a lot nicer. Okay, It's still a little too tall, maybe. I could, I could make it a little smaller, but you can see that I can go in and change any of those numbers, and I can embed that PowerPoint or that presentation right into my Canvas document. So that's, a, that's an easy way for to put that on a syllabus page if that's what you want. A very fast updates. Uh, another way that we've used this, I'll just sh share one more quick option for you. Um, I don't know how many of you are currently using Google Forms. Anyone out there using Google Forms? Yeah, love Google Forms. Very easy to get those into your Canvas page too. So if I just edit a page and switch views here, okay, same kind of concept. So here's a little Google Form, okay. One of the ones that we use is a credit request form where we work. We have people that have to submit different uh, credit request options to us. So if I come in here and I want to get this form to use, you can see that one of the options in here is the same embed code. So I just click embed, gives me the iframe code, and now I can take that and I can put that into Canvas on a page. Okay, same kind of concept. Again, instead of having it be a, a set width, I can come in here and make that 100%. And when I save that, you'll see what it does. It will, put, it will take and put that form, it'll put that form right onto that page. Some of the reasons why we like putting, sometimes I just have to refresh this. Let's see if I just do a little refresh. It'll come back up. But some of the reasons why we like this is I like getting that data into Google because then there's a few other things that I can do with it very quickly, whether it's just take a quick snapshot of the data, I can see some graphs of the data. 
a lot of little things that I can do. I know you can do some of that stuff also in, in Canvas, but part of me really likes that Google environment because I'm more familiar with it, been using it a long time. So that's putting a Google form very quickly into a Canvas course. You know, the big trick, like you just saw, it's all about embed code, right? It's iframe code, it's always, it always looks the same. And then when you take it into Canvas, you just have to use that switch views option so that you can embed that into your page. And it, it works great, very easy to update, and very easy to put into your class however you need to. We're in, in the, the last five, five minutes. I know a lot of you have been wanting to ask some questions. So uh, if you have a question, let's, let's have that now. We appreciate you listening and waiting on those questions. So this is a really good question. We were playing around with this in the office. One of the things that you notice when you go into this publish option here, um, it actually has, in a lot of the documents, it actually has something that says uh, save new changes and publish automatically. But one of the things that we noticed was there's quite a delay. You know, if you go in and you've got two students working in a published document that's collaborative, that every time you refresh, you don't always see those changes immediately. So that's the kind of thing that, you, and I don't know how long that delay lasts, but I, I noticed that for about 30 minutes while we were working on this process, we only got a couple of updates. I would suggest if you're trying to get those real-time collaborations, rather than publishing the document in and getting the code and all of that and putting it in here, you might look to use the collaborations tool because that happens automatically. You saw it live here, right? How fast that was happening. I think you're asking Sir. like if you change your syllabus, like yeah. if you change that document, do you have to republish it? I mean, if it's incremental, that's one thing, but if I want yeah. to change it here right away, I would want to re re get that embed code. That's correct. It'd be faster just to re-embed it on the page versus waiting for it to automatically be published, because it doesn't seem to happen very quickly. So you, you had a question. Yeah. 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 The results, go the results go into a spreadsheet that we found in Google Drive. You have access to all of the data. That's something that I, I really like as an instructor, so I can use that in a few different ways. Ma'am. So the way that Google Apps works, if your school adopts it, your university, or if you're a K-12 teacher, Everyone gets into the, typically gets into the same domain. Some will set it up where students and teachers are on different ones. Okay, that's, a, that's an individual decision. So that's something that we can't really show here, but generally speaking, the district or the institution has the ability to set that up, and they might choose not to have them on the same domain. I've seen a few like that. Correct, yeah, you might run into some conflicts if they're in different domains. Now, generally, that's not a Canvas problem. It's the Google problem, right? Because they're saying sometimes uh, a district or a, a university will say, we can only accept submissions that have the same domain, and you're on a different domain than the students, or something like that. So that can cause problems at times. OK, we've got one minute, one question. OK, have fun at the carnival. Oh, and Katie, oh. is it right? Yeah. Katie, who introduced us, is going to be in the dunking tank. Oh. So there's your big moment. She's. She, I think they're making her. She's only been with Instructor for three weeks. So <laughs> go support her and um, let's see if we can sync her. Thanks so much Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, everybody.